This is the Nike Vaporfly 3, and this is the Nike Alpha Fly 3. In this video, I'm gonna go over some differences and what I like um, about each one of these shoes and which, ones I, which one I prefer. Uh, but before I get into that, um, I did wanna disclose that I am partnered with Nike. They sent me both of these shoes to try out. Um, but I guess getting into it, uh, I did run hundreds of miles in each one of these shoes. Uh, I think in the Alpha Fly 3, I have about, uh, or I have over 400 miles. I ran one full marathon. In the Vaporfly 3, I ran with this uh, a lot in 2023. I actually ran eight full marathons with the Vaporfly 3 last year, so I have a ton of miles in this one uh, is the, as well. Both of these shoes are road race shoes from Nike, uh, meant to be used up to the marathon distance. Go over some of the uh, specs and some of the differences between each of these shoes to start off with. First up is the Vaporfly 3. Uh, the Vaporfly 3 has a full Zoom X midsole. It also has a full length carbon fiber plate within there uh, and the upper is a fly knit upper. Next is the Alpha Fly 3. Uh, the Alpha Fly 3 has Zoom X foam. It has a full length carbon fiber plate, uh, but it also adds the Zoom Air pods under the forefoot. Uh, and the upper is a, an Atom Knit 3.0 upper, which is an evolution on fly knit. And it is a booty style design that has an integrated tongue. Both of these shoes are World Athletics legal, so they are at or below 40 millimeters of stack height in the heel, and both of them have an eight millimeter heel to toe offset or heel, heel drop. All right, just to round out the specs, the Vaporfly 3 comes in uh, at right around 200 grams or seven and a half ounces in my men's US 9.5, and the Alpha Fly 3 is about 15 grams heavier at 215 grams uh, or about seven and a half ounces. Both of these shoes have a few hundred, at least a few hundred miles on them. Uh, pretty good outsole coverage on the forefoot with a modified waffle pattern holding up pretty well uh, over that mileage. Both of them do have an exposed Zumex midsole um, that does come in contact with the ground in the midfoot. Uh, there is some visible wear, more so on the Vaporfly with some scuffing. Uh, and the Alpha Fly 3, it's actually holding up pretty well uh, over 400 miles. And then both of them do have small uh, patches of rubber in the heel area. Uh, both in this case are, look like they're holding up pretty well. So. Uh, for me, at least, the outsole durability really isn't a, a big concern other than some of the cosmetic scuffing on either of these shoes. Okay, getting into some of the differences and maybe uh, where my preferences will lie with in between either one of these shoes. So the biggest one uh, that can be noticed uh, right away is the addition of air pods in the Alpha Fly model versus the Vaporfly. So pretty similar midsole cushioning system with Zumex foam and a full length carbon fiber plate. Uh, but really these AirPods just add that next level of responsiveness uh, as you roll through the stride uh, and push off through the forefoot, uh, you get just a little bit more energy return from those AirPods. Uh, the second big thing uh, that I noticed in terms of differences between these shoes is just how the upper is constructed. So there is a more traditional separate tongue uh, set up on the Vaporfly 3 uh, with uh, pretty, pretty normal lacing and then a heel counter with a horseshoe shaped collar of padding uh, in the back by the heel. Uh, in the Alpha Fly 3, it's all integrated, so it's all a booty. It's uh, stretchy and padded in the tongue area, and then it uh, sits up a little bit higher and, and just cups that heel a little bit more uh, with the Alpha Fly 3. Okay, the last difference I'm gonna call out, and you might have been able to see it in the outsole shot, uh, just is the difference in the width between these shoes. So the Alpha Fly 3, is considerably wider from heel to toe than the Vaporfly 3. So to, to show, show the difference in width, I'll set them down on the table and can hold, hold them up like this. And really everything you can see uh, protruding over uh, on the Alpha Fly compared to the Vaporfly is just additional width in the midsole. So there's pretty close to about half an inch uh, of additional midsole width uh, in the forefoot, midfoot, and heel compared to the Vaporfly. Uh, and underfoot, that just results in, in quite a bit more stable, uh, stable feeling ride, especially through the midfoot and the heel. Um, and that really helps uh, when I start to get tired at the end of a marathon. All right, so rounding it out on which one I prefer and why, uh, I'm gonna lean towards the Alpha Fly 3. Really comes down to those differences I called out at the end here with the uh, extra response from the AirPods. I feel like that just helps 
pretty much from start to finish on any race distance. It just feels a little bit more bouncy, a little bit more responsive, and a little bit faster. For me, the upper fit is a little bit better, um, so that's just easier, easier to get my foot uh, in, locked down, and comfortable with this booty upper uh, and the little bit different heel shape as opposed to in the Vaporfly 3, which I find also is a good fit, but just takes a little bit more um, tweaking to, get, to really get dialed in and get laced up. And the last thing that I really prefer on the Alpha Fly 3 compared to the Vaporfly is just that additional width. So having a little bit more underfoot, both in width and just more cushioning really helps at the end of the marathon. To me, that just gives it that extra edge when you're trying to um, close out strong. It really helps to have a little bit more stable platform underfoot. Okay, with that for me, the pick is the Alpha Fly 3. Although I did run a lot of marathons in the Vaporfly 3 and I loved it, um, I, I can see that the Alpha Fly is going to be my preference coming into race season for 2024. Thank you for watching.